reading to you from the 24th chapter of Luke and with the 46th verse. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this evangelist, Cecil Moe. Anna Janama, converted alcoholic, gave my heart to Christ over 52 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. Then one year later, God called me to preach. Oh, friends, listen. Wish you'd have been with me and my wife in a quartet at the prison Sunday. We had three services. 21 people prayed to receive Christ. Oh, there was tears, I mean to tell you, in that women's, I bet half the women were in tears. You see, when you preach love, and the Holy Spirit of God uh, anoints that, there's going to be conviction. And they're going to say yes, or they're going to say no to Jesus. Well, listen, hey, I'm going to ask you to kick off your slippers, sit back and relax. Pour you a great big old hot cup of coffee or hot chocolate. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? Reading to you from the 16th, uh, the 66th Psalm, begin reading in the 16th verse. Come and hear all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he extolled with my tongue, and was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. The joy of answered prayer. Listen, dear friends. True testimony has power. I've had a lot of people say, well, Cecil, can you know that you're saved and you're going to heaven? Well, I'm sure you can. The Bible said the Spirit of the living God will reveal it to our inner soul and let us know that we've been born again, that our sins are under the blood, our name written in the Lamb Book of Life. But one thing we ought to do is to be quick to share our blessings. You know, friends, you've heard me say this, and if I didn't practice what I preached, then I'd be a hypocrite. There's no place in Christianity for selfish, tight-fisted people. That's just not Christianity. It's more blessed to give and receive. Now at Christmas time this year, there'll be billions of dollars spent on toys and trinkets for your loved ones and, and, and uh, decorations. My stars in the morning. But you know... Did you know if it wasn't for Jesus, none of these things could happen? I wonder how many people give to the Lord's work or give to, and I'm not talking about my work. Don't, don't say, oh, Cecil's bumming up for money. No, I don't want your money. I want your prayers because they'll work. Money don't always work, but it's good to give. Really, friends, and the Bible said, Given he who giveth unto the poor lendeth unto the Lord. It's pleasing when we help people. You know, you say, well, what can I do, Cecil? I'm a senior citizen, and my stars, I don't have hardly any. Well, I know what you're talking about because I live on Social Security. But the thing is, try it. See if it don't work. Now, if you go out there and say, I'm going to give something away today so God will bless me, your attitude is wrong. Of course it is. But if you give out of a full heart and a loving heart, oh, God will bless that. True testimonies encourage others to have faith. 
Now, answered prayer brings glory to God. Now, the psalmist wanted to build the faith of his friends. And he decided to tell them about God answering his prayer. Verse 16, Come and hear, all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. The other day, my family were here at Thanksgiving, and in, uh, in my prayer, I thank the Lord for the cancer that I got. I don't have it now, but I, but I did have it. You see, because of this cancer, I was uh, privileged to lead another alcoholic to Christ, and he's doing great. Oh, my stars, I get calls from him, and, he, and his business is picked up, and he's happy because he's doing great. Uh, what God wanted him to do. Friends, the other day, now listen to me, this is scary. The other day, at the Sunday at the prison, my wife always says a few words before I go to speak. And she said, ladies, how many of you here are involved, have been involved with alcohol and drugs? Every blessed hand in that service went up. She asked in the men's service, both men's service, all their hands went up. We have an alcoholic drug problem in America today. Oh, yes, we do. Oh, we sure do. Well, praise become part of this prayer. Let's see, 16 and 17 again. Come and hear all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he had done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. Friends, listen. Tell somebody about your blessings. Tell someone about the discouragements that you are going through. But you're assured that God said, I'll be with you. Jesus said, I'm with you even unto the end of the earth. The drama begins to unfold. I cried unto him with my mouth. He is extolled or praised with my tongue. He could, how could we praise God while facing such perplexing problems? He focused on God's power rather than his own problems. And he prayed earnestly and praised God continually. Ah, let's turn over to the 16th chapter of uh, Acts. Remember, Paul and Silas were thrown in prison. They were in stocks. They were and beaten. They beat the tar out of those two guys. Well, instead of complaining about the situation that they were in, they started singing and praising the Lord. God was so pleased, he sent an earthquake and shook the doors off the prison. Well, Paul and Silas could have got up and run, but they kept singing and praising the Lord instead of escaping. The next scene, we see the jailer ran into the prison, fell on his knees and cried out, Good sirs, what must I do to be saved? The most important question you'll ever ask. Hey, Paul gave him a simple message. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Short, but sweet. Now the jailer was saved, and he took Paul and Silas to his home in the middle of the night, and they, Paul and him preached Christ unto his family. All of his family were saved, and then they asked Paul if he would baptize him. This is after midnight. Did they get baptized to be saved? No, no. But because they were saved. Oh, why does people confuse that? Why do they confuse it? Well, here we have the two ministers praying and praising God. Their prayers brought an earthquake that freed the prisoners and the jailers was convicted, then converted. Praising adds power to praying. Oh, listen. Sin have permitted or prevented the answer to this prayer, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, 
the Lord will not hear my prayer. Just a second, folks. I'm going to take a little drink of coffee. Excuse me. My, that's good. You know, isn't it wonderful? Hot chocolate or hot tea or hot... By the way, hot tea is good for you. I forgot to tell you that. But sin could have prevented the answer to this prayer. See, sin uh, creates a roadblock to answer prayer. Here's what he said. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Friends, listen to me. I, uh, uh, out of the prison the other night, I told him, I said, men and women, let me tell you what. Somebody, you're in jail here because you did something illegal, did something wrong. Now, is God mad at you? No. In fact, the matter is he's kind of happy that you're here because you're going to hear about the love of God. You're going to see how God reached down in a gutter and saved an old drunk and give him a new life. And then, with an extra blessing, called him to preach. That's me. And I've been sharing love ever since. Oh, I said, but now you say, well, Cecil... Aren't you a hellfire brimstone preacher? No, I'm not. Do I believe in a burning hell? Oh, my dear friends, I sure do. And that's where unbelievers are going to go. In fact, the matters I said, men and women, the worst sin that you can commit today is a sin of unbelief by rejecting Jesus Christ. If you die in that condition, you will go to a hell. Simple than that. But you're too intelligent. You want to go to heaven, I'm sure you do. All you got to do is be godly sorrowful for your sins. Turn your back on the old way of life and come to Jesus as a little child. And ask him to come into your heart and save you. And he will. Absolutely without a shadow of a doubt. Well, sin creates a roadblock to answered prayer. Why? He said, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Now let's compare uh, Isaiah 9, uh, 1 through 12 to see the truth emphasized. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear you. Hey, listen, listen, listen. I said to the men, okay. You say, all right, Cecil, I'm going to turn my back on that way of life. I'm going to repent. I'm going to invite Christ in my heart. So I leave prison, and the first thing I do is I fail the Lord. I fall. I trip and fall. Well, am I through? No, you're not through. Well, let me tell you what it said. Confessing of sin is a vital part of effective prayer. It says in 1 John 1, 9, When our sins are confessed, He is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins. Yes, He'll forgive all our sins. See how David speaks of his latter in Psalms. It says, 103rd Psalm, As far as the east is from the west, so far both he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. You know, friends, I feared my dad. But, oh, I loved him. Oh, I wanted to be just like my dad. But I didn't. Dad was a wheat rancher and wheat and cattle rancher, and I turned out to be a preacher. I come out a lot better. You know, Charles Tindley, great hymn, Nothing between drives this home. Nothing between my soul and my Savior. Keep the way clear. Let nothing between... Those who want their prayers answered will keep their lives clean. Now, God answered, uh, answer proved this prayer has been heard in Psalms 19. But verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. 
Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from. You know, friends, there is nothing. There is nothing in the whole world any more exciting than to have your prayers answered. Well, I'm sure that God has heard all my prayers, but I know one thing. He's not always answered them the way I wanted them. No. I wanted it to happen today. But three years later, it come to pass. And he answered the prayer. Why? Because God knows what's best. You know, that scripture that the day I prayed on, I preached on that uh, God is always on time. He is always on time when the need is there. The psalmist rejoiced that God had heard his prayer. God hath heard me. What is your need tonight? He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Answered to prayer proves the importance of prayer. Answer to prayer proves that God hears our prayers. And answer to prayer proves God's mercy toward us. You remember the other day when down in Georgia they were almost out of water? And so the governor called a prayer meeting. I've been in there. I've spoken at governor's mansion. I spoke there when I was a director of the mission in Moultrie. And he cried out, God, send us rain. And oh, my stars, was he ever criticized. Oh, he was criticized because the governor got it. Oh, the atheist was livid. I remember one time. I went to an AA meeting, me and two other converted alcoholics. Not that I go there for only to witness to the AA guys, because they don't, they don't go far enough. They don't like to talk about Christ. They say about a higher power, but they won't you mention the name Jesus. And I got up and shared my testimony, and this woman hollered at me and said, "I hate you, Cecil Mo." I said, "Why?" She said, "Because I'm an atheist." I said, lady, that's your problem, not mine. Let's pray with confidence and expectation. Start out today, tonight. Start praying with expectation. Let's share the joy of our answered prayer and let's build the faith of those we love. Friends, I know God hears and answers prayer. And if you're born again, you know he did. Because he answered your prayer when you cried out, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. But let me ask you, friend, where are you going to spend eternity? Do you know that? Well, I know. I'm not going to go to heaven because I'm a preacher. I'm going to heaven because I accepted Jesus 52 years ago, repented of my sins. And not only that, he sobered me up. He even took those rotten cigarettes away from me. And I thank him and praise him for that. Thought I couldn't live without him. Thought I couldn't live without booze. But Jesus showed me I could. Friends, if you don't know Christ and you got a little tugging at your heart right now and you know your prayers haven't been answered because you don't even know him, would you bow your head to me right now and please don't pray this prayer unless you really mean it. Dear Lord, I confess that I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm so sorry for all the things I've done to you and to Jesus. Tonight, Lord, I'm opening my heart and receiving you as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to get on the phone. Call 303-471-8534. I'll not use your name on the air. I won't embarrass you. I certainly won't write and ask you for any money. I don't care where you go to church. Beloved, I'm only concerned where you spend eternity. And if you can't afford to call, get on the phone and call collect. I'll accept the call because I'm concerned. But more than that, Christ is concerned because he came into the world to seek and to save that which is lost. 303-471-8534. I'm waiting for your call.
my ship would be no more. And I thank God for the lighthouse. I owe my life to Him. For Friends, for the past half hour, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Moe. Thank you, dear ones, for listening in. Please continue to pray for me and my quartet and my wife, that God will give me the strength to go. All these services, I've got one tomorrow night, the Denver Rescue Mission. i got an hour down there. Usually there's 10 to 12 to 20 people come to Christ. You say, well, that's a bunch of bums and winos. They have a soul. Christ died for them. Well, listen, hey, I want you to be good to your neighbor. Stay sweet. Keep looking up for this wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night, and may God bless you real, real good. <laughs>